what I want to do first is to indicate how I have structured my keynote address. And I feel very privileged to call it a keynote address. But I need to deconstruct this term keynote address. First, by undressing myself. So, um, unfortunately, I'm now wired, so I can't uh, go much further than this and perhaps taking all the belt, etc. Based on the ontological epistemology, that's always a tongue twister. No, not that word. Uh, questions, who am I when it uh, comes to action research and who are we when it comes to participatory action research? So uh, I would like us to start by playing a game and since uh, Martina knows all of this, I would like her to co-facilitate the session by um, Handing out these cards to the guys at the back there. We will always have the slow learners amongst us. <laughs> Perhaps you know the answer. This is one of the questions uh, in one of my tests for my students that they have to answer. So let's uh, make it easy for you since my time is uh, gone and that is the okay now you have to explain to your next door neighbors why you have chosen the first and the last one are you still busy prioritizing yours is also the wrong choice Wrong choice. And after tea, um, I'd like you to go straight into groups, so that's why I'm going to try and prep you for the next session now. Um, so we had planned that there would be three groups, but we wanted to mix everybody up and try and So what do we learn from this simple exercise? Quick responses. Hmm? We are all different. That's the usual uh, answer. So, what else? IS. IS. <laughs> Intellectual and structured. <laughs> IS. IS. I thought you said IES. <laughs> yeah. And what? Yeah, that is what you learned. You learned who are you. No, but not IES. I am. <laughs> he said IES. <laughs> okay. Is it not about um, your comfort zone? Okay, different people, different times. That might be. But in general, you might have the same preference. Uh, so, the need is for adapting in whatever circumstances. Whether it's teaching, doing research, it's about your thinking preference in general. Uh, becoming an adaptable professional, and we refer to whole brain thinking. But the most important to me is to get your students out of their comfort zones because they will have the different uh, um, preferences as you are sitting in front of me. And if you were to be my class, I had to um, accommodate all of you. But I have to get all of you out of your comfort zones because it's about uh, maximizing potential. So it's about maximizing my potential as the lecturer or researcher and maximizing my students, maximizing those that might form a team uh, working with me when it comes to participatory action research. So this will have an impact on our professional development, scholarship of teaching, and andragogy, and research scholarship, scholarship of engagement. 
So let's do some practical application. Unfortunately, we do not have time to do it properly. So all that I'm going to expect you is to write down the first observation, the first thing that comes to mind when observing the next scene on the screen. Yes? First observation. Impromptu. Write it down. <laughs> you did not listen. Please listen. <laughs> Lizzie would not mind me <laughs> doing that to you. I know, I know. <laughs> Okay, so let's, uh, where uh, is a person with um, a uh, blue card? Oh, I've got a blue card. No, but um, I don't want you to answer because you know the answer. <laughs> Professor. Uh, what, what did I write down? Somebody shot the traffic light. Someone. Right, your answer. That's bad answer, your answer. <laughs> Do they have insurance? Do they have insurance? Other blue cards? Too much speed. Too much speed. Chaos. Chaos. Okay. Yeah. Death. Death. Like Death. Death. Some, of, some of you are making up stories, but okay, let's leave it there. Some of the green. Green. Yeah, but. You're, you're like Liz, you know, but okay. Green. The big car was better off than the little car. The big car better off than the, the little car. Accident. Accident. More greens. Crash. Crash. Okay. Okay. So what is the difference? It might not be that clear. Usually I put the blue blues in one group and the greens in one group, and then it's more uh, clear what the differences are. What do you do with the yellow? What do you do with? Yellow. Just wait, please. <laughs> you told us to interrupt. <laughs> no, I, I, I did not. Did I? I asked, I asked you not to. Okay, so what the difference usually is, is that the blues come up with the facts. Bare facts, it's a crash. It's this and only that, and that's it. When it comes to the greens, it's more of a procedural uh, explanation of what happened there. First this uh, car and then that car, and giving more detail. And now, what uh, do the reds bring to the table? We are the red people. I said, yeah. Probably nobody died. Yeah, so <laughs> nobody died. More eight people? Ouch. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> that was what I okay, another ouch. Okay. Ouch, so the that. focus here is on the people, yes. the injured. Uh, some of you came up with uh, the people stuff, but uh, that was uh, making up stories. <laughs> uh, okay, now the yellows. Neil, it's your turn. Uh, we had that. Yeah, uh, something else. Do you want the second or third observation? No, not from you. I've got oil on the road. No. Did you observe that? Huh? Do you think of that? Yeah, that's good. Good. Yellow? <laughs> you see, now this is now making up stories. Other ideas from the yellows? This has been raining and all sorts of stories. And that is what we did, the comparisons. So what do we learn from this exercise? If you are a structured person, the green card, you would tend to structure your program in that way, assess in that way, etc., etc. 
instead of including all the possibilities. Can I say something? Um, no, no <laughs> I didn't allow her, and Neil, but uh, can we allow her? Is it a constructive uh, yeah, contribution? I was thinking about you saying that it affects the way that we assess things, but I think what you're not taking into account is that our, our students have also chosen our own particular discipline, so they may, in the majority, tend towards the same kind of position. Okay, that's your constructing of meaning for now. And to me, uh, what is important here is interpersonal when it comes to participatory action research and the intrapersonal when it comes to action research. And it's the experimental self. We heard that yesterday that we have to experiment with ideas. So it's about holistic thinking, intuitive thinking, opposed to analytical thinking, it's synthesizing and integrating. So examples of when we do profiling, one would have uh, this practitioner with a high on the blue quadrant and uh, the yellow quadrant. And what is interesting uh, here is that would also be a stress profile. That is a dotted line. So that is a stress profile. So when this person is under stress, he or she becomes more fact-based that person becomes more emotional, etc., etc. So we did a research, coming back to your question, on this with a thousand uh, first-year students, and uh, that was the outcome, a composite group profile, um, equally representing all the quadrants. Now, what would you think is a typical profile of a medical student? Right, but if I am to be uh, a blue person, I would like my doctor to family, etc. I don't agree with you. I'm sorry. No, no, no. That might be the case. That if I'm intellectual, I would like the doctor to tell me to lie down and I'm going to examine you. And only then I will get to perhaps some medication, how to sequentially uh, take it, and then to the uh, personal stuff. Yeah. Right, so that would fit your profile. Uh, Professor Dieter Holm is top of the class. His question, uh, answer was correct, because this is the typical profile of the medical students. Composite whole brain group. So what is it? typical profile of an engineering student, and for that matter, an engineer. Do we have engineers uh, in this room? A lot of vets, but... Okay, so what is the typical profile of an engineer? Now you had your chance, Professor, so... More green. More green. And... Yes, because we don't want the bridges to come down on us anymore. <laughs> right. So, that is the profile. So why? I do not sit in front of my computer anymore. I have to design a bridge, be creative in designing that, and I have to sell that idea to other people. So I need to have the soft skills. So, at some stage, that was missing in the curriculum at the University of Pretoria, the engineering curriculum at the University of Pretoria. Are you a drama a lecturer? Well, I'm yeah, a yeah, obviously. <laughs> but you do come a music student. The only difference here is the sample size. Mm. If we had more, like the engineers, it would also have been a composite uh, whole brain group. Right. Um, so, examples of practical application. Uh, one of my students uh, is a lecturer in dentistry. 
For the first time, he allowed his students to work in groups. It's a fourth year dentistry uh, module on tooth morphology. And he allowed them to role play and to come to the front and work out things with him there. He gave them the opportunity to either work in groups or as individuals. And this group came up with this idea of painting their clinical jacket. Now with teeth and all of that. This group had painted their clinical jacket using the colors of the whole brain model. Uh, this group designed a game. Now it's not kindergarten uh, uh, students. But that was their way of best uh, thinking about how they could uh, learn that model. Another one, a Donta Quiz, Toothalopoly. <laughs> uh, In-flight magazine, that was by uh, an individual student. Now, uh, imagine sitting on a plane reading about teeth all the time. <laughs> but that was his uh, understanding of how best to um, master that module. And then, of course, uh, not of course, there was also um, one of them who submitted this CD. He wrote a song about teeth and accompanied himself by means of guitar. Now, do you think he will ever, ever forget what he had to learn for, for that? Um, no. So this whole um, theory uh, is closely linked with a theory on multiple intelligences. Since we don't have time for that, I'm not going to go into that. Uh, then examples from taxation. Can you think of a more boring uh, subject there than taxation? Uh, do we have any people from accounting or taxation here? But that is what they told me. So it's a group of young uh, lecturers, and they sit with those large classes, two, three hundred. And what do you do? Oh goodness, to get them engaged. We talked about engagement and participation. It's not that easy in a large uh, class. So they uh, divided them in groups and uh, requested them or uh, give the assignment or the task to come up with whatever idea in order to explain taxation um, terminology to in layman's terms to the man in the street, so to speak. And uh, one of the ideas there, so you can see, there are games, there are posters, there's a lot of other things. And the one, the winning um, uh, product was we are used to these um, yellow booklets, uh, this and that for dummies. So this was uh, taxation for dummies. And uh, to me, it's always important to celebrate that. And of course, this group was the winning group. And they did receive some uh, uh, money. Taxation is all about money. In my practice uh, as the coordinator of the postgraduate certificate in higher education, the focus is on um, action research. And that would be the final exam. Different products based on your action research, like uh, writing an article, a conference paper, a chapter, a book, a portfolio, or whatever based on your action research. To me, that's authentic assessment. And there are examples of um, the application of action research in different contexts uh, at the university, institution-wide, and other institutions. Uh, for example, in veterinary science. And uh, yeah, we have... Um, Lana Boeta, who received the prize uh, for the best uh, entrepreneurship uh, project. She's from veterinary science. Uh, health sciences, public health, anatomy, nursing, 
The Foundation for Professional Development is a private uh, high institution with a focus on uh, leadership programs for um, medical practitioners. And my question would be, so why do you expect your students to write the three-hour exam? So then I'm a bit uh, provocative. So um, it was great to see them as a collective, as a group, contributing to our notion of participatory action research and going to a conference and being a group of 12 former and uh, current students at that stage to the Altaza conference, it's the Higher Education Learning and Teaching uh, Association of Southern Africa. There are other participatory action research um, initiatives that I initiated with uh, the Department of Family Medicine and Public Health. Uh, in the, uh, the Faculty of Economic and Management Sciences with the Department of Taxation and in the Faculty of Engineering, it has a complicated name now, uh, Engineering, Built Environment, uh, whatever, uh, with uh, Information Science where they have 8,000 first year students that, uh, who, who have to do a compulsory module on Information Management. So what is important to me is that we uh, celebrate um, action research. And uh, at the university, from the Department of Education Innovation, responsible for academic staff development, there are annually um, awards in terms of education innovation. It's for groups other groups or individuals. So it's at institutional level and also at national level we have uh, um, awards uh, from Haltasa. And that is uh, sponsored by the Council of Higher Education. So one of the departments are very innovative in what they are doing. So they have been awarded uh, Education Innovation Awards from the university as well as at international level. Now you can see that creative person there is, is beyond the old model, old brain model, and he's the head of department. So no, uh, no wonder they get the Innovation Awards. Okay, it seems to me you are a bit uh, bored, like uh, Martina, she's now Googling and uh, stuff. <laughs> uh, so what do you see on the next slide? Is the figure turning clockwise or anti-clockwise? If you have seen this before, don't participate. It depends. So where are you, where are you looking? Top or bottom? <laughs> or are you not prepared to say? Anti? Clock? Anti? Clock? Anti? Now this, this is the first time you are giving the wrong answer, Professor. So. Clockwise. No. Both sides. Both ways. I think it all has to do with, with uh, left brain, right brain thinking, so I'm not going to bore you with that. Is that not true for all research?
The focus here is on the us or the we, and the we take responsibility for monitoring our professional learning. And we investigating our professional learning. It's about us, and it's interpersonal. Self-study, but as a collective. So how do your ideas about action research mat match the following? In my constructing of meaning, I had to adapt some of those words. So um, instead of improvement, I thought, no, I did not think, I know from experience and reading and all of those things that have to do with constructing new meaning that uh, action research is emancipatory. It is empowering. It's empowerment. Self-empowering. It's transformation. That's beyond improvement or change. And new meaning making, constructing new meaning. So, uh, action research has the underpinning notion of uh, a constructivist epistemology. And this one? Have you considered all of those? Into implementing of innovative ideas, opposed to student focusing on student problems. I'll come back to that. Yeah, it's it's uh, because this is our context. Uh, but uh, actual research uh, can be applied in any context: leadership uh, and management. Uh, Uh, medical, uh, medical practice, uh, uh, practice, all of those. Yeah, since uh, the professor has interrupted me now, was that this is the, uh, the last slide? So instead of intervention, I choose to uh, use the construct initiative. And it's practitioner research. It's about living theory, practice theory, and it has its focus, again, self-study. So what are the new constructs? These are my constructs. The whole idea of today's session is that you walk out with your own constructing of meaning. So to me, this is the marriage between scholarship of teaching and research scholarship. Contributing to the wish of the university, and that's the University of Pretoria, to be research driven. Now my concern with the other definitions and why I adapted those is Moving from a deficit approach, where I ask from the on onset, what is wrong with my practice? That is where intervention comes in and student problems and all of that. Opposed to an asset-based approach. Since we, as the practitioners, are the assets, the self is an asset, human capital, Innovative idea is an asset. Thinking preference is an asset. Initiative, experiment, all of those to me are assets. So changing from, yeah, changing from change to improve to transform. So the rationale for action research, there are several and I'm going to just run through them and you can read them as we go. There we go. 
and I hope it makes you think. Etc. We've looked into the theory of whole brain learning. Now, to me, uh, that is a theory that uh, is applicable as the theoretical framework for practice, whether it's teaching practice, whether it's uh, your vet practice, uh, your leadership uh, practice, it should be. Um, Whole brain teaching and learning, whole brain communication, whole brain management, etc. Now, in terms of action research, I consider action research as, uh, whole, as whole brain research since it's experimental. It is focused on the self, it's intrapersonal, the C quadrant. It's process, you have to follow some process and it's new meaning making. So that is aligned with the A quadrant where it's about coming up with new facts. Participatory action research is whole brain research in the sense that it's experimental and the difference here it's interpersonal and it's process and it's about constructing new meaning. And it's about thinking out of the box. Not so? Yes? No? No. Rather not? Perhaps. I never could understand what it means to think out of the box. <laughs> Apparently that was to think more creatively. That is if you are in the box. Yeah, if you are in, but if you are in the creative box, what then? <laughs> so, when we look at our whole brain model, if I am, the, it's not true for that uh, being the, the creative box, but for now let's uh, consider that as the creative box. If I'm already there, but a very unstructured person, I have to think out of my box to think in the other boxes as well. So I have adapted thinking out of the box to thinking out of my box. So, thinking out of my box, it doesn't make sense. The bullet's there, so that's uh, on purpose. And I al also refer to the perfect mismatch. Now think about your uh, supervision practice. We often get uh, postgrad students complaining about their supervisors. So why is that? It's about this mismatch of profile or profiles. But if I know about the underpinning theory, it can be complementary profiles and there need not be so much conflict. It's vulnerable. If you are a lecturer and you ask students to give you feedback, you don't know what you're going to get. And you have to be very strong. So in order to interpret that. All that is uh, my take on it. Uh, it's uh, the spiral. Uh, there might be different spin-off spirals. So since I am of the opinion that you start off with an innovative idea, the spin-off spiral might be the problem that you have to face along the line. And uh, the point of departure is of your context and your vision. So they are, the spiral consists of different cycles, also spin-off cycles, and different steps to be followed, not necessarily in this uh, order but planning for innovation. Again, to me, uh, what is important, the asset-based approach. Implementing the innovation, reflecting 
on the in, uh, innovation by uh, reflecting before action, in action, after action. That is the idea of Schön. You can see there are different, um, if you are the mentor or the uh, project leader, that might be your spiral. You have uh, different uh, participants and each of them have their own spirals and action research processes. Now, um, what I would like you to do next is based on this comprehensive model. It's the whole brain model that we um, have structured and we call it teaching in colors. So I would like you to think in researching in colors. And this is the model. So will you please uh, read what you can read there and, um, <laughs> and adapt, the, adapt the model to the research context. We're going to choose one. You have to substantiate your answer or justify. These are the profiles and you have to choose one that, that fits my way of doing. As demonstrated today, I said you, you have to observe critical observation. Perhaps you know the answer. This is one of the questions uh, in one of my tests for my students that they have to answer. So let's uh, make it easy for you since my time is uh, gone. Using the whole brain model is but one innovative idea that I propose. And it can't be the only one. It can't be just this. You have to link that with others. You have to integrate it. You have to think about curriculum. You have to think about uh, assessment, you have to think about other theories like, uh, as I said, uh, multiple intelligences, constructivist learning, um, metacognition, self-regulated learning, all those nice words. I didn't want to bring that in. So um, my uh, constructing of meaning nowadays is uh, it should be whole brain self-regulated learning, whole brain metacognition. Whole brain, this and this and this, in order to maximize the full potential of the learner. Since out there, what we need to do in the classroom is should be linked to real life out there. If not, we are not doing what we are supposed to do. And real life out there is um, a whole brain. Uh, community, environment, where we have, and the other th uh, thing that you have to keep in mind are the, you refer to the attributes of the um, graduates, I think, or someone yeah, else. So it's um, leadership, teamwork, all of those, and I link um, that to whole brain leadership, whole brain teamwork, and uh, yeah. How can we, um, improve what we are doing in terms of this uh, program, similar programs, or at an informal level, academic staff development. Let's, as a collective, look into that. Now, uh, to me, it's not wrong to start off with uh, asking a question about what is wrong. But to me, it's, that's the deficit approach, where I would rather take an innovative idea and see how I can experiment with that and how can I uh, transform practice and transform myself. That is where it should start. 